we just had a, a nice uh, keynote by Guillaume telling us what is new in, in Groovy 2, 3, and what's coming in Groovy 3. So I hope you guys are excited about Groovy's future because I know it's really, really bright. And thanks to the, the new advancement made to the language, there are so many projects out there that make use of the language. Of course, we know of a few that have been used in the past uh, like a great way to get people excited about Groovy. Perhaps the most well-known out there is Grails. Uh, there is a full dedicated track at the other side of this room just for Grails talks. So you know how important that is. So the, the idea of this talk is to uh, shed a little bit of light on those other projects that perhaps are not as well known as Grails, but they are very useful. So the point is that you guys should be able to know these things and maybe put them to work in, in your uh, daily job if you really want to. So a few words about me. Um, I'm Andrew Salmeray, as Niels had said. And uh, I come from Mexico, but I currently live in Switzerland, so my flight time wasn't really that bad. Uh, I know there are a few people that have flown from really far away. Last year we had people coming from Japan, even. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is there anybody here coming from Africa? North Africa, South Africa, maybe? No? See? Most Europeans, I guess. Anyway, uh, I'm a Java champion, I'm a Java 1 rockstar, and I think I know a few things about Groovy, so I guess that qualifies for, uh, myself for speaking about these things. And I, hey, surprise, surprise, I broke a boot, book about uh, Griffin, uh, so yeah. Anyway, that's the boring stuff. So, <laughs> I used that slide before you, and I don't know you use it, Guillaume. So the use of suspects, and uh, here's a question. Has Anybody not seen this movie? You know the end of this movie, right? Okay. So the usual suspect, these are, these are the projects that I consider to be uh, the gateway into Groovy, besides Groovy proper. So most people got in touch with Groovy because of Grails. Uh, is anybody here that has not written a Grails application? A few hands, whoa, wow. More hands than I expected. Then the other kind of people that got in touch with Groovy is because of Gradle. Is anybody here not using Gradle? Just two, three hands. That's, that's few people. See, they see what I mean? And I, I know there are not that many people making use of desktop applications. Here, let me turn the, work, uh, the question around. Who is using Griffin, actually? <laughs> see, just few hands. And I guess Spock. You will know, notice that there is no official Spock logo yet. And I'm really sad that Peter Nidivisio, the author, is not here with us this year. But if you see him or you just tweet to him, P. Nidivisio, we need a logo for a Spock, A-S-A-P. Now this guy, the fifth one, which you know exactly who this guy is, is. this is um, Burble. No, it's not the other guy that you're thinking. Uh, he is the master, and in a moment you will see which project I consider to be the master of these other four ones. So for those of you that have little knowledge of Grails, uh, Grails uh, was started in 2005, very, very early in the days of, of uh, Groovy. Even before Groovy became 1.0, this was or this framework already. And it's inspired by Rails, so there's no mistake there, uh, no surprises. At some point, it was even known as Groovy on Rails, but uh, we were asked not to use that moniker. And it was better, because now we have a really nice logo that really showcases what, what we're aiming for in this framework. Uh, most of the projects that you'll see in this list are Apache 2 license compliant, which means you are free to do whatever you want to do with these things. You can even fork them and create your own versions. They are very friendly. They are commercially friendly. Uh, it builds on top of the Spring, Hibernate, and SiteMesh, so many other already well-known Java-based libraries in, available in the huge Java ecosystem. So if you know a, little few, a few things about these particular projects, jumping into Grails is really, really easy. As a, as a matter of fact, I believe that one of the reasons most people jump into Grails is not just because of Groovy, 
because one other thing that Grails offers on top of Hibernate, and this is GORM, Dynamic Finders, the ability to do really, really cool things and fast things with Hibernate without suffering through the standard Hibernate API. Um, it is used in by both small and large projects. Perhaps in, if you have been previous attendees at other great conf, uh, conferences, you have seen a few use cases. Uh, four years ago, we had the um, European Patent Office presenting a use case. Uh, you have, may have seen that CERN, the European Council for Research on Nuclear uh, things, so atoms and whatever, they use Grails, and that's cool, and uh, Sky and so many other <laughs> companies out there make use of Grails, and of course, uh, the GreatConf agenda, the GreatConf website is built using Grails, so large, small, medium, you name it, and uh, the latest release, in it is 2.4.0, there may be one coming up in perhaps a month or two months, uh, so the next uh, iteration of 2.4. And uh, tomorrow in the morning, Graham will give a keynote on what's coming in uh, Grails, to tre uh, Grails 3. So if you're really interested into Grails, don't miss that one out. The next one, oh, I forgot to say, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to stop me at any time and ask them. But the next project that I consider is the big one is Gradle. Now, I remember seeing Grails since the early days. It was the first Spring 1 2GX. As a matter of fact, it was just called 2GX, the Groovy and Grails experience, back in 2008. We had a first, a short presentation of Gradle 0 0.1 at that time. It was really tiny. It looked a lot like something else that I will show you later, which is called Gantt. But now, Gradle, since then, has grown into something that's really amazing, really powerful. So it's a build tool for those of you that have, s have not seen Gradle before. And it builds on top of the Maven conventions. So if you know the Maven conventions by heart, creating a build descriptor for your project is just a matter of a few lines of code. Because the idea behind Gradle, what you write in a build script, is how you deviate from the conventions. The nice thing about Maven is that it gave us conventions, but you had to write a lot of ugly XML code. I hate XML, so people that know me know that I hate really XML code because it has pointy things. Uh, so you have to write a lot of things specifying, again, the same conventions. But in the case of Braille, you do not. If you follow the conventions for your project, then your build file is really short, really tiny. If you deviate, then you need to specify additional things. And that's the beauty of Gradle. Uh, it also has a nice uh, graph of tasks, so it knows which tasks need to be evaluated, which tasks need to be executed, and which don't. So your builds are actually more consistent, and it, is, it will eventually lead to even faster and better reproducible builds. It's really amazing what uh, things can be done with Gradle. The latest release is 1.12. They have a really fast release cycle. At least every six weeks, they push out a new release. And uh, I know that Mr. Hacky right there is uh, smiling because his face is right there. He has a talk on Gradle Gooseness tomorrow morning, right after Graham's keynote. So if you really want to know more tips and tricks about Gradle, don't miss out Mr. Hacky's Gradle Goodness. So far, so good? OK, so the next one, uh, Griffin. It's part of the great technologies, just because it has a GR on its name. Uh, this is for creating desktop applications. And it began in 2008, so three years after Grails. And it's inspired heavily by how you build applications in, with Grails. But, in, but instead of using HTTP and HTML, we use Swing and any other UI toolkits that are at our disposal. Uh, it is, supports multiple toolkits. So the default one that comes with the JDK prior to JDK 8 is Swing. Perhaps some of you know that Oracle, previously Sun, has put a lot of effort and a lot of money to make sure that ChildFX really works and it's, out, it's now really working out there. So we support this toolkit. We support more languages, not just Java, not just Groovy. You can uh, use uh, Mira and Python, Clojure, and yes, even Scala. 
uh, you're really that desperate. Uh, the last release is 1.5.0. This is the, the latest stable release that follows the Grails code base, because as a matter of fact, some of you might not know, Griffon is a fork of the Grails code base. And then we took out everything that has to do with servlets and put Swing in. But, of course, I'm the leader of, of Griffon and really passionate about this topic. Uh, we have a Griffon 2.0 coming up. I really tried to make a release, a beta release of, Gr of Griffon 2.0 for this conference, but there was some trouble with the, uh, uh, with the plugin that we were using for deployment. Um, so instead of doing things manually, I decided just to wait a little bit more. There's going to be a short talk later this uh, today at uh, 5, 5, 10, is it that correct? <laughs> yeah. So 30 minutes for, of explaining what's going on, what's coming up in, in, Grails, uh, in Griffon 2.0. So believe me, it's really exciting, or at least I'm really excited about what's going on. Next one here is uh, GVM. And this is the ringleader. This is Kaiser Sose. <laughs> because thanks to GVM, you can install the other projects very easily. How do you install Grails? You download a zip file, uncompress it, configure a path variable, and now you have access to the Grails command. How do you run Gryphon? Pretty much the same way. How do you do it with Grails, uh, Gradle? How do you do it with the other projects that we'll see? It's almost the same way. So Marco Bermulin, which I don't think he's in the room, but he's in the conference, uh, he's the author of GVM. And he was inspired by another tool on the Ruby community called RBM, the Ruby Environment Manager. This is why this thing is called the Groovy Environment Manager. And it does pretty much that. It has a server-based component uh, where it, can, it keeps track of all the different candidates or projects that can be installed using GVM. And you install a shell-based application. It's really tiny. It works in multi-platform, even on Windows. You're really that desperate to develop on Windows, you can use GVM. Uh, of course, I prefer any other Unix variant. Uh, so this thing will configure your path, it will download your uh, the particular version, and you can switch versions from one another. You can even use custom built locally a snapshot version of what one of these projects, and it continues to work. You can switch from one another. So this is, this is an amazing project. Uh, the latest release is 1.3.13. Last night during the Hacker Garden, for those of you that were not at the Hacker Garden, uh, please make a note and try to be there next time because it's a lot of fun. Uh, we hacked uh, the GVN UI, a Gryphon application, which is a, or it will be a Gryphon client um, visualization of the commands that you can call with GVN. So now, with this thing running in the JVM, you could run it in pretty much any other platform that may not be supported by the GVM shell. Yes, even on Windows. OK. And uh, that's a funny picture that Robert Fletcher found out, in the, uh, out there in the interwebs. As I said, there is no Spark logo. We need a Spark logo. Anybody here new to a Spock? You guys know a Spock? OK. You, you guys do testing, right? So shortly, a Spock is kind of like a testing DSL. It's a testing language. You can use it for Java code. You can use it for Groovy code. You can mix it with anything you want to. What's great about Spock is that it just handles the bike of in some way. So you write a Spock test, but believe me, the code that you see doesn't look like standard Groovy code. It's even better. It's nicer than Groovy code. So it has more sugar on it. Don't worry, you will not die of diabetes because of using a Spock, but it's really cool. And for that, I will recommend you guys to wait up until tomorrow. Uh, at the last slot, Robert Fletcher is going to talk about the Spock. And um, what else can I say about Spock? You can use JUnifor alongside Spock. So if you are used to the JUnit rules, which are really useful, uh, you can use them alongside Spock without any modifications whatsoever. 
What's really great about Spark is how you uh, parameterize your test cases. If you have used parameterized test cases in JUnit, you know that each class must have just one method that can be parameterized, or all of your methods have to use the same parameters in the same order. What's great about Spark is that you can have different methods in the same class, in this case it's called a specification, and each method may have any number of arguments with different uh, types, and all those things can be parameterized in the same place. So it keeps your code neatly and packed. It's, I, I really like the way that you write this. And I must warn you, once you go to Spark, you never go back to JUnit, because it's that good. Now we have Gaelic. Uh, Gaelic is the uh, small lightweight toolkit for Google App Engine. It was begun by Guillaume, and now the uh, project lead is sitting right there, uh, Vladimir. Uh, sadly, there is no Gaelic talk at, the, at this time of the conference, but if you have to develop or you would like to develop applications for Google App Engine, I will certainly recommend you to have a look at this one. I uh, believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Guillaume, but uh, one of the reasons uh, Groovy gained the power of uh, the, um, the command pattern, uh, what, what we let's call the uh, command, uh, what is it, uh, something like commands, the command notation at any in 1.8, was so, so that you don't have to write dots and parentheses. Uh, that feature was the, the first user of that feature was Gaelic in order to generate really nice DSLs. You can write, so, so Google App Engine has several services. One of them is the persistent service that will allow you to talk to the big table. And you have to use something that looks like SQL, but it's not. But with the command pattern, it's very easy to write something that looks like Microsoft's Link queue, but it's groovy. And like this DSL, you can write much, much others. And the route definitions for a Google App Engine application inspire another guy to write another project that we'll see in a moment that is called Ratback. So one thing that I like about the uh, Groovy ecosystem projects is that there is a lot of synergy. There is a lot of cross-pollination going on. Many of these projects use Gradle for building their releases. Many of these projects also use a Spark for testing. Uh, there's also Calif, began by, by Guillaume, when the, at that time was a Spring Source Beamware. They published Cloud Foundry. Uh, well, now you have another option for developing applications in the cloud. So, of course, came Calif, which is a word play on Gaelic. Uh, basically, it's kind of the same API but in a different platform. So if you're targeting Cloud Foundry, this is a nice choice. And um, Guillaume has gone to do some other projects and take uh, better care of Groovy, making sure that Groovy tree is coming along nicely. So he's no longer the uh, project lead of both Gaelic and Gaelic, but they are in pretty good hands, right? Yeah. Uh, the latest release was posted a few months ago, so it's, it's, it's still vibrant, it's still active. Uh, now we have a newcomer. I was not aware of this project until I created these slides uh, a few weeks ago. And it turns out that Glide is another uh, small, lightweight framework that you can use for uh, building Google App Engine applications. So it's a little bit of a competitor to Gaelic. It tries to have its own DSLs. And opposed to Gaelic, Glide can be installed using GVM. So, Vladimir, maybe you had to have a talk with uh, Marco so that you could distribute Gaelic with uh, GVM. Uh, the, the difference is that Glide provides a, a basic command line tool for bootstrapping the application, whereas Gaelic, if I, correct me if I'm mistaken, it does not. There is no Gaelic command, is it? No, Gaelic provides the template. Exactly. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll touch lazy bones in a moment. But I guess th this is the, uh, the difference, perhaps, because Glide has a command line tool already. Uh, it's in the, still in the early stages. As far as I can tell, there's at least just one guy working on it. Uh, it's just a matter of, of getting uh, a critical mass of users. So 
Again, if you are working with Google, um, Google App Engine, certainly give this project a look and perhaps we can keep this project growing. Now we have Rapack. So this is the project that was inspired by Gaelic, how Gaelic uh, created these routes, and also inspired by the Sinatra, which is a micro web framework from the Ruby world. Uh, Ratpack, uh, the guy, okay, I don't remember the name of the guy. I know his Twitter handle, he, or his GitHub handle. And then Tim Berlung took care of it. And then the mantle passed over to Luke Daly. But we also have another member of the Ratpack team sitting right there at the, at the corner, uh, Robert Fletcher, the Spock guy. Just remember that face, because he's going to talk a lot about things about Spock. You're in the hot seat now, Robert. Uh, so what's great about Ratpack is that it provides a Java-based API at the core, and on top of it, a nice groovy layer. So if you really need to, you can write a Ratpack application, just Java, so you can make it really tiny. If you're targeting an embedded device where you need to have a web application for some reason, you can write it, write it using Ratpack. Or if you have a much uh, higher, uh, more computing power, then, of course, you can use Groovy without any problems. Uh, another great thing that Luke added was uh, the usage of Google Juice for dependency injection. It's uh, trying to stay close to JSR 3.30. And it makes uh, adding modules and configuration and new behavior to your Ratpad application as easy as registering beans on the uh, Spring XML file in Grails. Very, very simple. The latest release is 0.94. They're really, really close to uh, reaching 1.0. The documentation is pretty good. And the uh, Lari Hotari. It's going to give a talk on Ratpack and Grails 3 tomorrow morning, right after uh, Graham's keynote. Now we have Gantt. Gantt is the other build tool that exists out there. Gantt, as a matter of fact, was used to build Grail at some point, and then they switch over. The author, Russell Winder, which is not with us uh, this time, uh, he started building Gantt releases using Gradle. And there are, right now, there are three projects that rely on Gantt. So three big visible projects is Grails, uses Gantt for its command line tool. Because Griffon forked the Grails API and the Grails code base, we also use it in 1.5. And uh, there is another project called Gint for integration testing that relies on Gantt. And I think, I believe that's it. But you may have heard the news that uh, Grails is moving away from Gantt. They want to use Grail. And Gryphon, Gryphon 2 is moving away from, from Gantt much, much faster. So this, perhaps, will be the latest release of Gantt, and it's going to fade away, and pretty much everybody are going to use Gradle. But if you ever come into the, uh, you find a legacy project where there is Ant being used, and you would like to use Groovy instead of XML, then have a look at Gantt. Uh, ECB. Here's another testing framework. Now, ECB uh, was created before Spark, and it only targets one way of working, which is behavior-driven development. Perhaps you have come uh, in touch with all the behavior-driven development frameworks like JBehave for Java, or perhaps Cucumber, which is most, mostly well known from the Ruby space. You can run Cucumber inside the JVM with Groovy, but that came later. ECB was first. And uh, this project was started by Andy Glover. <coughs> It is now in a little bit of a dormant stage because it has reached a stage where no new features can really be added. It's really stable. But they didn't reach 1.0 status. The documentation is fine. Uh, the uh, IDE plugins are OK. The only thing that is missing is that the version number is not 1.0. Uh, one thing that I like about ECB versus Cucumber, 
is that in Cucumber you have a definition of your specification in, in English or any other textile language, easily understandable by anybody. And the implementation of the specification, this is the code that you actually write. And you have to match these two using regular expressions. You know that how hard that can be, regular expressions. ECB uses just one file. And somehow it matches the textile, the natural language, with the programming language, which is Groovy. And because Groovy is really great for writing DSLs, how, what you see on an ECB specification, or as a matter of fact, an ECB story, is um, really concise. So if you want to give a try to behavior-driven development, you, I would say your first choice should be uh, ECB. Your second choice should be Spark, because Spark also supports some kind of behavior-driven development uh, uh, workflow. Questions so far? We're fine? Right. CodeNark. Uh, if somebody told you that writing a static code analysis tools for a dynamic language was impossible, he was lying to you. It's not impossible. It's really hard. But this is what the CodeNark team has done for you. If you are used to tools in the Java space like Checkstyle, PMD, Finebox, that is what CodeNark is for Groovy code. Uh, CodeNark relies on a really nice feature of Groovy, which is the ASTs. The, com the Groovy compiler exposes the AST tree for you, so you can hook into it. And at compile time, CodeNark will inspect the code using the AST and see, well, looks like this particular piece of code is not really bad, yet, and it will output a violation. There are many, many rules out there. Uh, coming from both Finebox and PMD and Groovy as specific that you can find on CodeNark. The re latest release, they have kind of like a weird numbering scheme because the latest release is 0 0.21. Uh, but the project has been along for since 2009, so it's really mature. Uh, I think that at one point we had the author of the, um <coughs> of the project speaking here, I think it was two years ago. There are plugins for Grails, and Gryphon, and Gradle. If you ever apply the code quality plugin on a Gradle build project, and you're using the Groovy plugin, you will actually have access to CodeNark. It just happens. So that's really great. Um, there is a sibling project made by the same team, by Peter Mew. No, it's, a, it's another Peter. Um, <coughs> G-Metrics. G-Metrics calculates the cyclomatic complexity of your code base. And it will also give you um, how many lines of code for, for your particular classes. And there's one additional thing that you can do. If you pair up your code running G-metrics and Cobertura, you can calculate another metric called the CRAP metric how crappy your code is, using another project called crap for j so it's, it's interesting. Just search for crap for j and G-Metrics, and you'll find this thing. It's very easy to set up. Now we have GPAS. If you ever had the need to uh, create well-behaved concurrent code, and if you ever have some kind of uh, actor envy from Scala, then look no further. Jeepers provides you with actors. But it gives you much more than just actors. It also gives you a, a data flow, uh, which is kind of unique. Uh, the thing about a data flow variable is that it is aware of concurrency, but the value that it has depends on any other, perhaps on the other variables that are part of a graph. The thing is that once the value is assigned, once the value is bound, then it is available always. So it's kind of like a one-pass assignment, and then you're done. Uh, lazy final values, if that makes sense. Uh, there's also a, a nice abstraction on top of for the for join uh, framework that came in JDK 6. Uh, there is also software transaction memory that you find in Clojure. Well, there's in GPAS, and there is also CSP for those that are in heavily into research and doing uh, number crushing. Uh, give a look at GPARS, you will not be disappointed. 
um, the latest release is one to one, and if not mistaken, it is included in the standard Groovy distribution. So if you install Groovy using GVM, you will get GPARS for free. Next, we got Jeb. Uh, actually, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this thing. Uh, some people call it Gev, some people call it Jeff, some people call it, uh, I don't know. In Spanish, I will say Gev. Uh, it is start was started by Luke Daly also in 2009. It is Jeff. See, no, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. G-A-B. <laughs> There is, a, there is a FAQ how to pronounce this thing, sure. Uh, it provides browser automation. So it's kind of like a, a, a DSL on top of WebDriver, which is what drives uh, Selenium, but also has a page model object. But it also provides jQuery-like syntax uh, for you to uh, work around your pages. Uh, recently, Luke gave the uh, leadership mantle to um, Marcin. Marcin, uh, what's his name? Is his last name? Marcin Edmund. He is uh, a Polish guy living in London. And Luke and Dali used to work a lot on Jeff, and now, well, uh, Marcin has taken the, the lead here. He knows exactly where he wants to take the, uh, the project. And they're really close. I think, actually, the latest release is not 0.92, but 0.93 with some tag. Or, or at least they're working on it. They're also really close to get into one zero, the documentation is amazing. You can run this thing with Firefox, with Chrome, with Safari. You can run it with Grails. There is a Grails plugin. But you can run it with any other uh, web framework you want to. As a matter of fact, in a previous Hacker Garden, we had an integration with Archelian. And Archelian can be used to run any container-based framework, mostly web applications. There is a, a Spock integration with Jeff. And Colin is going to give a talk on Jeff and Grails tomorrow after lunch. So check this one out. We also have uh, G contracts. Anybody here ever worked with uh, Eiffel, the Eiffel language? OK. So Eiffel has one feature that the author, of, of course, will call the Eiffel MB, which is design by contract making sure that your programs conform to a particular specification. What G-Contract does, and it also relies on AST transformations, is allows you to define what are the invariants of each class, so what are the conditions that should never uh, change after you invoke methods. And you can also put on constructors and methods what will be the prerequisites, the requirements, so that will be with the at requires. And what would be the past conditions once the method has finished? That would be the at ensures. Uh, there is nothing more that I can say about this. It's just a tiny library. It's extensible. You can create your own uh, annotations. It's also sad that the author, uh, he's um, Andreas Tangres. He's uh, a Groovy core developer also. Uh, he's not with us this time. He was with, uh, with us uh, l last year. Uh, so maybe he can come back later. Uh, but it's a really nice thing. The, the latest release is 1.2.12. Uh, of course, you can run this with AggGraph, or you just configure your Gradle dependency or Maven dependency. And uh, I found there is another project out there called, I think there are two uh, projects for Java. One is Contracts for J, which is outdated. And the other is called C4J, if I'm not mistaken. C4J will force your classes to extend, a part, to follow a specific um, uh, workflow. You must extend for another one and do some crazy things with annotations. But what I want to go with this is that if you need to mix Java code with Groovy code and apply contracts to both things, you can use G-contracts for Groovy and C4J for Java without any problems. Now we have GroovySev. Remember that previously I said somebody coming from J uh, Japan last year? Well, we got the author of GroovySev uh, coming uh, last time for, to speak about GroovySev. What is GroovySev? It's pretty much a background JVM running. 
and inside that JVM you have a Groovy already, so it's warm. And every time that, that you issue uh, a call using the Groovy, cli Groovy Surf client, the connection is established and you get a really and, and quick uh, return. Because one of the problems of running Groovy scripts is that we have to pay the price for bootstrapping the JVM every single time. Groovy really is not that slow, specific, particularly if we use compile static. But kickstarting the JVM is what kills it. But what if you were able to run these scripts very, very fast? That's exactly what Groovy Serp allows you. My next question would be, why would you like to, to build scripts with Groovy in this way? Well, if you think for a moment that Groovy, standalone Groovy, already delivers you with the capability of running self-contained scripts. And what I mean is, if you use grapes, if you use the add grab annotation on a script, you can define all the dependencies that for that particular script in the same script, which means you have a simple uh, script that talks to a database. You will need a JDBC driver. You define the JDBC driver as a dependency on add grab, and then you're good to go. You can do anything you want with this script. Just ship it to your teammate, and he only needs Groovy and nothing more in order to run this script. But if this is a script that's supposed to be run continuously using cron or some other kind of uh, automated tool, then you will always pay the price for that GVM, uh, JVM to start up. But if you use Groovy stuff, then that startup is really, really fast. So the best thing that I could, that I will say about Groovy Surf is that if you pair with AppGraph, you pretty much have a replacement for any Unix script that is out there, as long as you don't run out of perm James space. For that, there is a solution. Just run JDK 8, and that's it. Now we have GroovyFX. Uh, GroovyFX is kind of like a DSL for JavaFX. If you remember the days of all where JavaFX 1 uh, was being proposed by uh, Sun, there was this new language called JavaFX script. Terrible name. Terrible syntax. They eventually killed it. Oracle said, no more shenanigans with this new language. Let's go with a Java-based approach. And it's now really paying off. But some people really missed the, f the capabilities or the facilities of being able to write uh, UIs with tiny pieces of code with a DSL. This is exactly what GrooveFX allows you to do. The latest release was posted uh, last week, uh, so it's still re relevant, it's still active, 0 0.40. And it is compatible with JavaFX 8, which means it relies on Groovy 2.3 at the very least. <coughs> and really nice uh, visualizations that you can do with JavaFX. Perhaps one of the uh, most compelling reasons why you would like to do JavaFX development right now, if you're on the desktop, is that it includes our charting uh, APIs. So if you need to deploy charts, so easy with this thing. And of course, animations and be fancy with bindings. Now we have lazy bones. See, I, I was coming back to lazy bones. Uh, lazy bones, as Peter has said on the website, came out of the frustration of Rapback not having a custom way to bootstrap a project. Because every Rapback project is also a Gradle project. Grails gives you a standard structure. Rapback requires a standard structure, but it doesn't give you the tools to create it. You will have to create it manually. So Lazy Bones gives you now that capability, pretty much like Maven archetypes. It bootstraps a project with a, defined, a predefined structure. And uh, that is not the official logo. We started talking a few days ago that, again, Lazy Bones needs a logo. And Thomas Lin uh, quickly came up with this idea. These are actually uh, commons. Uh, they are protected by the, the commons uh, license. I am forced to say this because, hey, we love open source. Uh, I'm really hoping this becomes the official logo. So just go, uh, if you see Peter around, uh, just tell him, hey, make that the logo. And he will have a short talk later this day, a 15-minute short talk on Lazy Bones, if you really want to know more about this. 
there are a few archetypes for bootstrapping Rat Pack applications, uh, Glacely, uh, Gradle plugins. Yesterday, there was a Hacker Garden contribution for bootstrapping a Gradle plugin project using Lazy Bones. There is one coming up for Griffin and uh, much more others. Now we have Grain. Grain uh, was kind of like a sleeper project because we definitely, the, the Groovy community overall was not aware of this thing that being developed until boom, it just came out. Uh, the, there is a company behind it, it's called Seas Gears and they are in the Ukraine. What's interesting is that during the revolution they posted a few releases. So even where the, the country was in trouble and th nobody knew exactly what's going to happen, these guys kept working, they just loved the Groovy. So Grain, it is a project for creating a static websites. You can use a markdown syntax or you can use a better one, which is ASCII doc. I am a fan of ASCII doc, so every time I have the option to say go with ASCII doc, I will say so instead of going with markdown. Uh, it's very easy to migrate from markdown to ASCII doc because ASCII doc is kind of like a subset of the markdown syntax. Uh, the latest release is 060. Uh, they have added a few, a few tricks to this thing, and it's really, really simple just to get started. It has a command line tool, and then you just to just use it. It's kind of like uh, GitHub's Jekyll, where you predefine your templates using one of these formats, and they say generate, and boom, you get a static website, and then you upload it to anywhere you want to, and you're done. You also have Gaiden uh, coming from Japan. Uh, it's kind of like a similar project like Green, but this project was started a little bit earlier. And the idea is for you to generate a uh, static website, but just using Markdown. The, one of the caveats of Markdown is that it's very useful for creating a simple page, but not a series of pages. It doesn't provide chapters. It doesn't provide links between pages. This is what Gaiden gives you the ability to have a table of contents and a relationship within pages and still use the markdown syntax. It is GVM friendly, which means it comes with a tiny command line tool that is installable using GVM. So just do GVM install guide in and you get the latest version and you're good to go. Uh, Groove script. Um, well, I almost... Uh, yeah, I am on time. GrooScript is a transpiler. It's a compiler that translates Groovy code into JavaScript code. Why on earth would you like to do that? <laughs> because pretty much everybody's doing JavaScript these days. In the a few years ago, we toyed with the idea of running Groovy on the browser, but sadly, the only thing that you can run is JavaScript because the powers that be have decided that JavaScript is the only language. Even some people try to run Ruby on it, native Ruby, and it didn't pass. The only thing that you can run on the browser is JavaScript, which means you have to write anything that transpires to JavaScript. That's exactly what GrooScript allows you to do. And right after this talk, uh, Jorge Franco, which is the lead of the GrooScript project, is going to have a talk on it at the uh, other room. So if you're interested in writing Groovy code that can be run on the browser, then have a look at this uh, project. Finally, we have Crash. Crash is an embeddable shell that you can run on any JVM process. Uh, Julian Viet, he has a talk on, a full talk on Crash. And last night, during the Hacker Garden, there were some attempts to integrate Crash into some other stuff. There is already a Grails plugin for Crash, which I might be mistaken, but I believe was also started during the Hacker Garden. So the reason why I'm, I'm bombarding you guys with Hacker Garden things is that many of these projects have received great contributions during Hacker Garden. It's one thing that you guys, anybody, can do. And the, it executes Groovy-based commands, so you just write tiny Groovy commands and, and pack it alongside your application, and you can do amazing things with this thing. So I know there is also a console plugin for, for uh, Grails, but it, 
tries to do something crazy like uh, executing, you send the Groovy code as a string to the server, executes and come back, so it marshals strings, whereas this thing you connect to a port and then really make use of the Groovy code. I, may, I don't know if I have another project coming up. Nope, that's it. Uh, so uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to take them at this moment. But my, let me remind you again that the whole point of this talk was to get you guys excited about the different small layer projects that exist in the uh, Groovy ecosystem. I say it's smaller because some of them are really tiny in the sense that the code base is tiny, but they're really, really powerful. They allow you to do better and nicer things. They automate a lot of uh, uh, boilerplate code in the manual um, task that you will otherwise have to do. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Yes, Colin. The, the Colin says, uh, what area do I, I think is missing from the Groovy ecosystem? Well, curiously, we have, let's say, we have Grails, Rat Pack, Gaelic, Caliph, and Glide. They are targeting the web space. But as a matter of fact, Grails is really uh, stands alone from the other guys because it's a full stack framework. And I love the Groovy community because they're very friendly, they're very helpful, there's a lot of synergy but I would certainly like to see a competitor for Grails. In the Ruby space, Rails is big, but it's not alone. There are others that are trying to hit and become the new uh, upstart. I would like to see the same thing in the, Grails, in the Groovy community, just so that, the, um, that, that we get fresh ideas into the whole space. Not because I want to see Grails go away, I love Grails, but I want to see fresher, newer, wacky, weird ideas that maybe these guys are not considering or they don't have the time or the resources to do, but the other guys do. And then have, again, that kind of synergy working in these two projects. Uh, oh, I, I failed to mention on the DevOps space, there's another tool called Glue, made by LinkedIn. Uh, I don't believe it's as powerful as used as Chef or Puppet. But if you want to, to um, create, uh, uh, well, virtual machines and administra uh, yeah, manage uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, virtual devices or virtual appliances, you can use Glue as well, G-L-U. Uh, maybe that's another space that needs a little bit of love considering that there's a lot of hype currently happening in DevOps. And Finally, mobile. And for that, Cedric has a talk on how to run Groovy on Android tomorrow. Yeah, particular pair with the um, uh, lambdas and the new JDK features, making sure that Groovy runs even faster and faster uh, as time passes by, it will certainly make it for a better case of running a Hadoop cluster. That's another space, big data. All right. So we're definitely we're now out of time. So I will still be here for the whole conference. If you guys have any questions regarding these uh, projects, just come by and ask me. And Make, I hope uh, you, ha you have made a note of the different other talks that will touch on, this, on some of these subjects. So thank you again. Thank you very much. <laughs>